General Powell, last year you gave a campaign contribution to Senator McCain. You have met twice at least with Barack Obama. Are you prepared to make a public declaration of which of these two candidates that you're prepared to support? Uh, yes, but let me lead into it this way. I know both of these individuals very well now. I've known John for 25 years, as your uh, setup said, and I've gotten to know Mr. Obama quite well over the past two years. Both of them are distinguished Americans who are patriotic, who are dedicated to the welfare of our country. Either one of them, I think, would be a good president. I have said to Mr. McCain that um, I admire all he has done. I have some concerns about the direction that the party has taken in recent years. It has moved more to the right than I would like to see it, but that's a choice the party makes. And I've said to Mr. Obama, you have to pass a test of do you have enough experience and do you bring the judgment to the table that would give us confidence that you would be a good president? And I've watched them over the past two years, frankly, and I've had this conversation with them. I have especially watched over the last six or seven weeks as both of them have really taken a final exam with respect to this economic crisis that we are in and coming out of the conventions. And I must say that uh, I've gotten a good measure of both. In the case of Mr. McCain, I found that he was a little unsure as to how to deal with the economic problems that we were having. And almost every day there was a different approach to the problem. And that concerned me. It's got the sensing that he didn't have a complete grasp of the economic problems that we had. And I was also concerned at the selection of Governor Palin. She's a very distinguished woman and she's to be admired. But at the same time, now that we have uh, had a chance to watch her for some seven weeks, I don't believe she's ready to be President of the United States, which is the job of the Vice President. And so uh, that raised some question in my mind as to the judgment that Senator McCain made. On the Obama side, I watched Mr. Obama, and I watched him during this seven-week period, and he displayed a steadiness, an intellectual curiosity, a depth of knowledge, and an approach to looking at problems like this and picking a vice president that I think is ready to be president on day one, and also in not just jumping in and changing every day, but showing intellectual vigor. I think that he has a a definitive way of doing business that would serve us well. I also believe that on the Republican side, over the last seven weeks, the approach of the Republican Party and Mr. McCain has become narrower and narrower. Uh, Mr. Obama, at the same time, has given us a more inclusive, broader reach into the needs and aspirations of our people. He's crossing lines, ethnic lines, racial lines, generational lines. He's thinking about all villages have values, all towns have values, not just small towns have values. And I've also been uh, disappointed, frankly, by some of the approaches that Senator McCain has taken recently, or his campaign has, on issues that are not really central to the problems that the American people are worried about. This Bill Ayers situation that's been going on for weeks became something of a central point of the campaign. But Mr. McCain says that he's a washed out terrorist, but then why do we keep talking about him? And why do we have these robocalls going on around the country trying to suggest that because of this very, very limited relationship that Senator Obama has had with Mr. Ayers, somehow Mr. Obama is tainted? What they're trying to connect him to is some kind of terrorist feelings, and I think that's inappropriate. Now, I understand what politics is all about. I know how you can go after one another, and that's good. But I think this goes too far, and I think it has made the McCain campaign look a little narrow. It's not what the American people are looking for. And I look at these kinds of approaches to the campaign, and they trouble me. And the party has moved even further to the right, and Governor Palin has indicated a further rightward shift. I would have difficulty with two more conservative appointments to the Supreme Court, but that's what we'd be looking at in a McCain administration. I'm also troubled by not what Senator McCain says, but what members of the party say. And it is permitted to be said such things as, well, you know that Mr. Obama is a Muslim. Well, the correct answer is he is not a Muslim. He's a Christian. He's always been a Christian. But the really right answer is, what if he is? Is there something wrong with being a Muslim in this country? The answer is no, that's not America. Is there something wrong with some 70-year-old Muslim American kid believing that he or she could be president? Yet I have heard senior members of my own party 
drop this suggestion. He's a Muslim and he might be associated with terrorists. This is not the way we should be doing it in America. I feel strongly about this particular point because of a picture I saw in a magazine. It was a photo essay about troops who are serving in Iraq and Afghanistan. And one picture at the tail end of this photo essay was of a mother in Arlington Cemetery. And she had her head on the headstone of her son's grave. And as the picture focused in, you could see the writing on the headstone. And it gave his awards, Purple Heart, Bronze Star, showed that he died in Iraq, gave his date of birth, his date of death. He was 20 years old. And then at the very top of the headstone, it didn't have a Christian cross. It didn't have a star of David. It had a crescent and a star of the Islamic faith. And his name was Kareem Rashad Sultan Khan. And he was an American. He was born in New Jersey. He was 14 years old at the time of 9-11. And he waited until he can go serve his country, and he gave his life. Now, we have got to stop polarizing ourselves in this way. And John McCain is as non-discriminatory as anyone I know. But I'm troubled about the fact that within the party, we have these kinds of expressions. So when I look at all of this, and I think back to my Army career, we've got two individuals, either one of them could be a good president. But which is the president that we need now? Which is the individual that serves the needs of the nation for the next period of time? And I come to the conclusion that because of his ability to inspire, because of the inclusive nature of his campaign, because he is reaching out all across America, because of who he is and his rhetorical abilities, and we have to take that into account, as well as his substance. He has both style and substance. He has met the standard of being a successful president, being an exceptional president. I think he is a transformational figure. He is a new generation coming into the world, onto the world stage, onto the American stage. And for that reason, I'll be voting for Senator Barack Obama. Will you be campaigning for him as well? I don't plan to. Two weeks left, let them go at each other in the finest tradition, but I will be voting for him. I can already anticipate some of the reaction to this. Uh, let's begin with the charge that John McCain has continued to make against Barack Obama. You sit there as a man who served in Vietnam. You commanded a battalion of the 101st. You were chairman of the Joint Chiefs. You were a national security advisor and secretary of state. There is nothing in Barack Obama's history that nearly paralyzes any, parallels any of the experiences that you've had. And while he has performed impressively in the context of a campaign, there's a vast difference between sitting in the Oval Office and making tough decisions and doing well in a campaign. And he knows that. And I have watched him over the last two years as he has educated himself, as he has become very familiar with these issues. He speaks authoritatively. He speaks with great insight into the challenges we're facing of a military and political and economic nature. And he is surrounding himself, I'm confident, with people who will be able to give him the expertise that he at the moment does not have. And so I have watched an individual who has intellectual vigor and who dives deeply into issues and approaches issues with a very, very steady hand. And so I'm confident that he will be ready to take on these challenges on January 21st. And you are fully aware that there will be some, how many, no one can say for sure, but there will be some who will say, this is an African-American, distinguished American, supporting another African-American because of race. If I had only had that in mind, I could have done this six, eight, ten months ago. I really have been going back and forth between somebody I have the highest respect and regard for, John McCain, and somebody I was getting to know, Barack Obama. And it was only in the last couple of months that I settled on this. And uh, I can't deny that it will be a historic event for an African American to become a president. And should that happen, all Americans should be proud, not just African Americans, but all Americans, that we have reached this point in our national history where such a thing could happen. It will also not only electrify our country, I think, it will electrify the world. Uh, you have some differences with Barack Obama. Uh, he has said that once he takes office, he wants to begin removing American troops from Iraq. Here's what you've had to say about that. I have found in my many years of service to set arbitrary dates that don't coincide with the situation on the ground or what actually is happening tends not to be a useful strategy. Arbitrary deadlines that are snatched out of the air and are based on some lunar calculation is not the way to run a military or a strategic operation of this type. That was on February 10th of this year. 
on CNN. Now that you have Barack Obama's ear in a new fashion, will you say to him, drop your idea of setting a deadline of some kind to pull the troops out of Iraq? First of all, I think it's a great line, and thanks for pulling it up. And I believe that. But as I watch what's happening right now, the United States is negotiating an agreement with the Iraqi government that will call for most major combat operations to cease by next June and for American forces to start withdrawing to their bases. And that agreement will also provide for all American troops to be gone by 2011, but conditioned on the situation as it exists at that time. So there already is a timeline that's being developed between the Iraqis and the United States government. So I think whoever becomes the president, whether it's John McCain or whether it's Barack Obama, we're going to see a continued drawdown. And when, uh, you know, which day so many troops come out or what units come out, that'll be determined by the commanders and the new president. But I think we are on a glide path to reducing our presence in Iraq over the next couple of years. Increasingly, this problem is going to be solved by the Iraqis. They're going to make the political decisions. Their security forces are going to take over. And they're going to have to create uh, an environment of reconciliation where all of the people can come together and make Iraq a much, much better place. Let me go back to something that you raised just a moment ago, and that's William Ayers, a former member of the Weatherman, who's now active in school issues in Illinois. He had some past association with Barack Obama. Uh, wouldn't it have been more helpful for William Ayers to, on his own, to have renounced his own past? Here was a man who was a part of the most radical group that existed in America at a time when you were serving in Vietnam, targeting the Pentagon, and the Capitol, he wrote a book about it that came out in 2001 on September 11th and said, we didn't bomb enough. It's despicable. And I have no truck for William Ayers. I think what he did was despicable. And to continue to talk about it in 2001 is also despicable. But to suggest that because Mr. Barack Obama had some contacts of a very casual nature where they sat on an educational board over time is somehow connected to his thinking or his actions, I think, is uh, a, a terrible stretch. It's demagoguery.